Hairdressers podcast starts now. Featuring, featuring Matt Beck, Christina Cavalcanti, Brian Hare, Drea Boland, Thaddeus Boland, and Justin Scott. Stop playing. Bam. All right. So much metal. <laughs> all right, all right. Welcome to Splitting Hairs, episode 89. Uh, very excited to be here with all of you, all of my favorite peep people. We're so excited with you, too. We got Brian Hare. Hi. Drea Boland. Hey, hey. I almost called you Thad. Justin. Hi. Hi. Uh, Thaddeus <laughs> Boland and it's Christina Cavalcanti. We're all hanging out here in the salon. Already my phone says low battery. Bye. Uh, I'm hearing that YouTube is saying it will start. No, there's another live feed, guys. So some people are saying that this is going to start in 21 days. That's actually FSE Live that's starting in 21 days. Um, but we have tonight's podcast should also be on our YouTube channel. So if you guys are trying to find it, the best way to find it is to either go to freesaloneducation.com, click on the live feed button, or uh, go to our YouTube channel on the front page. It'll say all of our live events, and you can just click on that. Um, thank you guys for tuning in on Periscope beforehand. We do our little be pre-show party on Periscope. And then uh, we do the show live with all the cameras. So um, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, <laughs> Justin has uh, some new stuff to talk about today. We're going to bring you the news, but we're going to do it by sharing a little Wait, wait, wait. Don't ruin it. Oh, yeah. Good call. <laughs> Justin's got something coming up. And Drea uh, has some tresses. Yes. Brian's got some social stuff. And then... Uh, Dad's got that stuff. Dad's got that stuff. She's got to bring us a wheel. Christina's got Christina's stuff. Yeah, she does. Uh, we do need the wheel. We are missing the wheel. Christina's super blonde. I don't know if you guys can see because it's really dark over Thad and Christina, but... Yeah. We're going to yeah. call that the Bat Cave. We actually, with Christina's hair this time... Whoa. Christina's super blonde. Oh, check it out. So, with Christina's hair this time, we're actually taking it in a few stages because usually Christina's hair is kind of... One of those things that I probably put off too much and and not jump into doing. But uh, we did start a couple days ago. We put lightener all over her head. Um, she started out as like, uh, what level was that, Chris? Mm. Wicked Dak. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. It was it's like a, a four. It's Brazilian <laughs> yeah. brown. So Christina had colored her hair with a four. And so we did, uh, we lifted it with lightener once. Um then we toned it. Then we lifted it again uh, yet today. And then now we toned it again. And no, now you lifted it once, toned it, we, and then we lifted it today. two more times, I thought. I don't know. We'll, we've lifted it a lot. But our goal is to uh, to try to get the uh, get the base level of our entire <laughs> head uh, nice and, nice and uh, even. It. And then what we're going to do is go in and have some fun with it. So, you know, it's a process. And I think that that's something that that's we always really talk about is not rushing yeah, through, like trying to get everyone, um, not trying to take everyone so blonde right away. It, do it in steps um, and then work your way through. We, all we have to do now is lift the ends a little bit. And then we're going to have a nice clean palette to do whatever we want with our hair, which is the goal anyway. So kind of fun. Um, and that's, that's basically what's been going on. That our was, whole that, lives. That was the uh, 4th of July uh, over the last couple of days. That's what we did. Um, also, you guys have anything going on? Anything cool? 4th of July? Yeah. 4th oh. of July. Anything? I had a great it was fun. July. It was fun. fun? Yeah. Nice time off with family. Yeah. Yeah. Got to so hang out with fireworks. people. I did Shut see my fireworks. family once, actually. You didn't? No, actually. I, I think now. I did not see any of my family all day. Okay. How, but how I did saw you like my that? I saw my second family. Like, my other mom, my best friend, you know, like, that's all other family. But not, oh, like, okay. a real blood-related family. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Weird. And I think about it. I live with them. All right, cool. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're, we want to get this show back to uh, back to the basics a bit. So we've talked about, we're going to take, we took some questions um, on the internet, on the interwebs. Internet. Um, so we, we have those questions. We have our social stuff. We have our tresses. But we're just going to get through all this stuff. Uh, and we don't want to have too much, you know. Too much craziness going on. We still want to have some fun, and but we want to get the information out to you guys, uh, so those of you who are watching, you know, can soak it up 
and then quickly move on with your life. And I'm gonna knock and your throw computer. my computer. <laughs> you see what happens when it's not yeah. like Apple software? They throw it across the salon. Exactly. So, um, all right. So let's get into uh, let's get into industry. Software? What? There's other software. <laughs> there is. Yes. That there is. Uh, let's get into industry news, and then we will uh, move on from there. Move on. Where's my so- There we go. And now, now, hair industry news from Justin Scott. Yeah. Okay. So the news is going to change it up a little bit. Instead of talking about, um, like, of course, I'm going to bring in some really cool segments. But, hey, Periscope. Move that over. It's your armpit. There we go. <laughs> Sorry hey, about Paris. that. Okay. Uh, but instead of doing it about um, tons of celebrities in our industry this wasn't made for that which is why i really liked being a part of it when i had a chance because i was just some guy who taught hair i just did some hair you know and i want to focus the news on the cool stuff that i see people out there doing who aren't stage performers who aren't you know owners of huge companies um so i wanted to f- I, what we're going to do now we're going to feature you our viewers, people who follow us, people who do hair around the world. Um, we we're going to do this through social media. We're going to have everybody use our hashtag, yeah. which they need to start using more of, I feel. Yeah. So we're hoping to build up uh, hashtag free salon education. If you guys would like to see your work on splitting hairs, we would love to share it and talk about it and just showcase it. Um, but use the hashtag free salon education or tag us on Instagram so that we can put it out there and share it with people. Yeah. that's Because uh, that's really what it's all about. So that's what we're doing today. I have a few pieces, and what I want to do is focus on, I want to show a few, but even if we have maybe like eight or under that are really cool, I want to kind of post them up at the end of our show so everybody can make sure they can follow whoever we throw up there. Yeah. Um, if we throw your work up and you're not okay with it, I'm just going to do the good old hey-ho. <laughs> it's not on my hey-ho. cart because it's farther away from normal. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, we're going to pick everybody's stuff. We're going to tag them in the photos. We're going to do like a nice collage of them. On the free salon education page, which I think is really cool. Yep. So we have a few pieces today. I uh, been looking and kind of like screenshots of cool hair when I see it. So um, I can't really see which one she's gonna bring up. So you want to just tell me the name of uh, the first person you want to bring up there, Christina? Um, hold fast barbershop. Hold fast barbershop. Um, these are actually some local guys. Which Here? We have yeah, these are uh some guys over in Flemington. Okay. In a barbershop. They opened up. A little less than a year ago. They're doing great. Um, and they do like a classic gentleman's barbershop, shave parlor. And I like this haircut because it showed a really cool like psychobilly haircut. If you want to take a look at the phone. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Um, I really like this one. I thought it was really rad. You guys want to take a peek? Um, it was just a really clean work. Um, sides were simple. The top was like just perfect. Yeah. So I feel that, you know, that's something you don't see every day. And to have cool. somebody who could do like a really cool flat type. Uh, flat type psychobilly haircut is something that should be uh, shown. Be proud of. Right on. Good dudes. Um, that's something cool we have coming up in the future too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. What's the next one, Christina? A best bar- uh, barber. Awesome. Um, I picked this one because it's just really clean. Very Agus. simple. Agus. Um, yeah, Agus Bar. Many haircuts coming in here. I want. Did I tell you that, Christina? <laughs> his friends are coming in asking for the for Hay- his haircut for, for the Hayden. <laughs> for oh, the Hayden, please. The Hayden haircut. Yeah. Who? Jonah, <laughs> yeah, he got a mohawk. He got yeah. like a wicked mohawk. Yeah, it's cute. Get out. That's so cute. Yeah. yeah, it's really cute. So, but uh, what's the next one you got? Was it uh, uh Savilles, Savilles, Sa- Savilles barbers? Yeah. Um, the Savilles barber is just a very clean gentleman's haircut. I liked. You Pretty. don't see a very clean coiffed men's haircut that often anymore. The beard looks nice. And I would yeah, say I the beard that. is perfectly uh, sculpted to fit this haircut. It's so amazing to me. How many talented hairdressers there are, you know, like you, I remember 10 years ago when you, when, when I started in the hair industry, you didn't have social media for people to post their work all the time. Mm -hmm. So I think it was very easy back in the day to be like, I am the best hairdresser in the world. But now like you can very easily go on the internet and be like, yeah, you're better than me. You're better than me. You're better than me. I look at these and I'm like, I'm humbled all the time. Like (laughs) some of these guys follow me and like my work. It's actually really cool because a lot of barbers that follow me have been liking all like the women's styles I put up. So it's nice to see like cross appreciation between careers, which is nice. Yeah. Justin, I think that that's like a good start for like the beard that I want to grow. That you had, you could have had that by now. (laughs) You could have had that five times. 
I know. We're, we're, that, that, that's this the go around beer. Okay. I got you, buddy. Um, the next one, is it William? Yep. The next one is a, a friend of ours. William Everett. William Everett. I found this mm. by looking up our hashtag. You see yeah. what happened? Use our hashtag for Eastland That's beautiful. Um, yeah. It's just so clean. Very nice. It's cool to see the evolution of, I mean, we've it's known good. William now for about two years, yeah. you know, since we started doing this. So uh, just to see the, his work and how it's evolved, um, yeah. it, it just looks really good. Let's Happy see. for the guy. Right. Um, <laughs> Nathalie, is that the next one? Mm-hmm. Awesome. This one is just really cool, really clean, really simple, really crazy, good colors, nice shape. I like it. You know? Yep. And uh, the last one was Vaughn. I love Mayer. that color. Uh, this is just fantastic. Very clean haircut, perfect color. Yeah, it looks it really good. It doesn't look like it's full of um, filters. I like the so, style like, of it. Exactly. I think they executed everything very, very well. Um, yeah. Those are my first seven of my industry news from the industry. This is what the industry is giving me to work with. So okay. They're going to be popped up on the free salon education one soon. So make sure you guys, if you want to uh, get your work featured on here, we'd love to, to share it and show it. Uh, but just hashtag free salon education on Instagram, and we'll be able to find the photos. So. And my last bit of news? Yes. Tank top. <laughs> it's a very patriotic tank it's top. It's my uh, 4th of July tank top. Washed it, brought it in. It was just covered in like, what was this covered in? It was like beer and then ketchup, I think. Someone, I threw barbecue sauce all over this thing. <laughs> OxyClean. Wow. It was a good day. So I guess Justin had a good weekend. <laughs> I, I thought I actually got burnt across it, but it was only soot. It wasn't actually burnt through. That okay. bar crawl has really fun. changed you. Bro, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. All right, sweet. So, uh, yeah. Thank you, guys. William says thank you all. Hey, Aww. good job, William. All right, sweet. And uh, Periscope, we got to go because it's uh, phone's dying. But phone's dead. See you guys. Bye. Um, all right. So let's move into training tresses. Okay. All right. Get the 411 on celebrity hair changes. Here's trending tresses with Drea Boland. All right. So I'm really excited to see uh, more pictures of this first one. It's Blake Lively, and she has always been a blonde from anything that I've ever seen her in. And now she's just this really pretty, light, chocolatey brown. And I think it's awesome. That's sweet. I, yeah. I got to pull these up, actually. I have them right here. I was going to say, Brian and I talked about this earlier. Okay. So what did you talk about? We, I, yeah. That yeah. we that we liked it. <laughs> yeah, a lot. I would love to hear what yeah. you guys think. I was no, like, she made uh-huh. it sound like it was a really deep conversation. <laughs> now, Brian and I have actually been texting back for the past couple of days of Brian sending me pictures. He's like, "Oh, did you see this one?" And I was like, "No." Like, like I'm like, "Is that new?" I'm like, "I can't find that anywhere." Okay. But um, yeah. So Brian and I have already been going collaborated this week. Collaborated on the uh, trending chasses. Okay. Uh, the second one is Matt Damon is rocking a serious ponytail which i don't remember Ugh. when his hair got long i love it i it's love extensions. it too but like <laughs> i just don't know like when he got it to that point well I, when have we seen him i haven't right. when i had dinner with him last week <laughs> he's had he's had plenty of time to grow that he hasn't done much but that's true he must have been keeping it up in like a cap or something during our skype calls <laughs> he's in a new movie i want to see uh-huh. yeah about mars looks good I don't know oh, that's probably on. when he grew his ponytail, his, his time on Mars. Yeah, <laughs> he spent a lot of time there. I All can't. Right. Sorry, let's get back to the tresses. <laughs> We're talking about it. <laughs> All right. All right, then we have Kasha, who is uh, tennis ball green. I love her. That I, I like to think that it was after Brian did it, so that's how we're... Uh, the, the roots would say that's about right. Yeah, yeah you know, so we're Sorry. going with that one. Because America. Um, <laughs> Zane inspired me, and then I inspired Kesha. Yeah. Well, I find it so <laughs> funny that every, well. anytime yeah. you see Kesha with fantasy colors, she always has a root. She's just lazy. And I just, I don't understand why they didn't, why is there not a photograph of when it was freshly done? She yeah. has a sensitive scalp. Yeah. Yeah, maybe she, she never colors the has root. them do that. <laughs> uh. Maybe. maybe. That's a real flag from somewhere, so she's too busy you know, trying to steal it for that. <laughs> what? There, America. She does weird stuff all the time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh. I thought this was really interesting. So this, uh, the Couture uh, fall preview was this past week, and on the Chanel runway, every single model had one of these short, dark, 
blunt bob wicks. I can't even look at it. I want one. I feel like that should be in the movie, like Cone Heads or something, oh, yeah. or or uh, Galaxy Quest. <laughs> I love so, that movie. I think that haircut was in Galaxy Quest. I think actually. it. I think it was. I can't look at it. But here it was this high couture fashion show, and these wigs were all over the runway. So. Good for them. Oh I would love to, to have seen their faces when they put those on them. Or when they just <laughs> showed them. Me, oh, sorry. It reminds you of what? Of uh, Fifty First Dates, the 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 lady trainer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's who it is. Yeah. Um. Well, Kendall Jenner uh, Instagrammed a photo of her in the wig because she that's walked in the show and she's like, <laughs> "I said yes because it's Chanel, and who wouldn't?" <laughs> I want it just for fun. Yeah. Yeah. I could see you wearing that, Brian. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, we should get you a wig collection. We should. Should start my own wig collection. Yeah. Watch out, Raquel Welch. Oh yeah. Here I come. <laughs> yeah. Every day you remind me more and more of the alien from American Dad in the wig collection. We'll just oh seal God. the deal on that one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next we have uh, Carmen has done um, has gotten extensions put into her hair, which I'm I love her short hair and I love how cute and PC it was, but I think it just shows how well done these extensions were with how seamless they are. And I well, thought that was really cool. Are they seamless? Because in this picture, she's definitely right where her hand is is where her layers would be. It so could be. I don't I, I haven't seen any other pictures of it, but because I'm such a fan of extensions, it looks like she's like, Hey, check it out, but I'm hiding the <laughs> the truth. The seam. Yeah. But So we'll see more. Yeah, I like the short hair. I like the short hair. <laughs> All right. All right, uh then Jennifer Garner uh has gone pretty blonde for in this picture but what is going all over uh the internet in the hairdressing world is is that a bottle of olaplex in her hand <laughs> that's definitely a bottle of olaplex. I say yes. drinking yeah. it yeah. now yeah there is no doubt so i say the yes jennifer garner's blonde and she uses olaplex yeah so that was that and then right before the show started we found out that kelly ripa is blunt is blue yeah that's is she doing the show blue? You guys watch that show, She does right? the show. She, yeah, did, she did it pink. Did like she did it pink? Like right. All right. She but she did it pink? Yeah. yeah. Good for her. I saw yeah. that. I was like, when did she get cute? See what teal hair does? It makes you cute. That. Put teal hair back on. You look, you look adorable. <laughs> so we yeah. know Justin's Pass. preferences. <laughs> yeah. I like teal. He I likes think. teal hair. All that's right. It. All right. And that's it for the tresses. Very, very cool. All right. Let's get into social media stuff. Social media. FSE social media. Submit your questions to Brian Hare on our Facebook community. Or by using the hashtag free salon education. Free salon education. Hi. Alright. Alright, so for starters, I saw I've been looking forward to going over this one just because I think it's a good topic. And because I told she asked it like days ago. But I commented, I was like, I promise, just watch the show. We'll do it, but it's not gonna be for a few days. So Shira put up on our page, uh, so the time has come where I feel like I need to raise prices. I raised them last year when I moved to my new studio. I invested a lot in it, started stocking products for sale, and felt like since I wasn't working from home anymore, it was valid. I've heard people say they raise prices 5% every year. I thought that sounded crazy at the time, but I'm kind of at that point. I mean, I pay more on rent every year and also on products with taxes and general inflation. I don't think it's unfair for me to raise prices, but I would like to get to let everyone know I would like to let everyone know in the best and easiest words possible. I need to find a way for them to understand that it's really out of necessity and not out of greed. Any advice? I'm not worried about losing clients. It's more about presenting it in the most professional way. Which I think is a good topic because I know a long time ago we chatted about something kind of like this. But this I feel like because she's in a studio now. Because I used to say just blame it on the salon. Or like, <laughs> not blame it, but like I know what you mean, yeah. in the past, I'd said you know when you worked for a salon, it was good to treat it like the promotion and the celebration that it is, right? And that way, people were more, oh, that's awesome, congrats. Then, oh, now I got to dig deeper in my pockets, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but when you work by yourself, it's different because right. you're the one controlling the pricing. Yeah. Right. I mean, I definitely understand. I've I've seen it in the past where it's a little nerve wracking doing that. Because I, I worked for a shop where I had to try to convince my coworkers that, like, as a salon, we needed to move to, you know, tiered pricing or raise the prices or something like that. Yeah, because you guys were all the same price. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. And it was never changing. 
And I, I explained to my coworkers, I said, and maybe this can help with a way to translate it to your guests. I had said, um, you know, I, I, I explained to them that the cost of everything is going to go up. It always is. That's just the way the world works. And right now you live comfortably and you make a good paycheck, but that exact same paycheck is going to put you in the poorhouse in five years because it's not going to be able to afford the rent or the gas or the car or anything else, the clothes, as that gets more expensive. Yeah. So that was my way. But I don't know how – how would you word that to guests? Well, my thought on the on the whole situation, and I've, I've now – after we've owned the salon now for six years, um, I think that too many people want to raise their prices too quickly. And, you know, we've talked about this before, but I don't feel like you should raise your prices ever until – you're not being able to fit people in. Right. And then that's when you need to raise, whether it's your staff or um, you as an owner or you as a studio uh, person in a solo salon studio kind of situation or booth rent until they're knocking down the door and cannot get in with you. Then I wouldn't raise your prices because you're raising your prices for, um, you know, for you're going to loyal people you have. Yeah. You need to have that crazy clientele and then you have a reason to raise your prices. It's it's the in demand part of it, um, you know. And you can't just raise your prices. I don't think without adding something to it. So if you're going to raise your prices five dollars, then give a reason for it. Um, change something in your salon or make it because it's just like our our landlord wants to raise our rent every year here in the building, and he doesn't do Once. a damn he thing. Does. Yeah, he raises it every year <laughs> a lot, um, but he doesn't do a damn thing to make this building look better. But he does talk about prices going up, which is fine. But maybe you should do something to show us why we should pay you more money. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with a haircut. You can't just raise your haircuts just because the world around you is getting more expensive. The right. world around you is getting more expensive, but things are getting nicer. And things are getting – like you look at the movies. Going to the movies is more expensive now than it used to be back in the day. But look at all the – the upgrades and crazy things that they've done at a movie theater. We were talking about it earlier with Lazy Boy recliners and servers and, uh, you know, different things. So their prices are going up. And I hope this makes sense, but there's just a lot. The evolution is you make something better and then you charge more for it. So as a salon, you need to make sure that um, if you want to raise your haircut prices, just come up with maybe something fun, a new menu, or maybe you're going to take more time in the shampoo bowl, or you're going to add something to that service to make it worth more money is is my that's my opinion all right so that's how she should do it how do you think she should word it so say she's hit both of those yeah like she's ready to give more in the service she has gotten to the point where she needs to raise prices because she's that busy yeah how would you suggest wording that well i think that the, the best way to word it is just to be honest with with your clients you know like if you're if you need to if you're going to raise your prices then you just say to them you know this is the situation we're gonna and we're gonna raise like uh, let's say um, you know my book is so busy and I want to keep with all my loyal guests so w my prices are going up five dollars I hope you know I I've, I just said it to some of my guests that have been coming in I've been doing some of these people for you know ten years and they're still at like a you know fifty dollar haircut so now my book is getting so busy so now I'm just saying to them you know I I'm so booked at this point, like I, I'm booked so far out. I need to make sure that, you know, that time is very valuable. So right. my prices are going to be going up a little bit, you know, and, and it, if you do it in a small increment, I don't think it's a big deal. I don't think people are going to freak out. Well, and honestly, like the whole 5% thing that works out to like two $2 and 13 cents that yeah. you just added to it. So, yeah. I mean, I honestly, I wouldn't, I would do $5 at a time. Right. I think $5 is a pretty... I think haircuts are weird when they're like $82.50. I, like I agree. It's very weird. I mean, but some people do it, and it's fine. It probably works for some people. But um, Plus, I think if you do it $5, that's more than 5%. And $5 on every single service adds up really fast. Yeah, it yeah. does. And, you know, you got to be careful because you don't want to uh, – you are going to lose customers, and that's okay. And that's what a lot of people don't Well, and that's realize. why you wait until you're that book. Yeah. So that when the ones that don't want to pay it sort of wiggle out of the bunch, yeah. then there's – you know, you've got room and demand for more people to get in. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I worked for a salon that every year on November 1st, everything went up $2. Okay. And that's, and, I mean, that, and, that's a program that you had. So clients knew about it. They knew about it and yeah. they knew that that was happening. It wasn't a surprise. And 
that's just the reality of the how it worked. Yeah. So that's why I think it's easier if you're a bi if you're a salon than if you're a booth rent. Because if you're a booth rent or studio, um, and you say, you know, every November first I'm raising five dollars, it's a little bit of a yeah. different story. So you have to have a reason uh, to be doing it. And I think uh, when you're busy enough, you will have that reason. Good answer. Guys. What else? We got that. Uh, well, the one I was telling you about earlier that I think is funny, I'm sort of, I'm on a bunch of different hairdresser social medias, and one of them that for some reason has been popping up a lot in my news feed is the Olaplex users. Okay. Which I look at because I am Because you're an Olaplex user. user. I right. am a fan. Uh, and I, I see it a lot now where people are talking about, they're showing other products that sales reps are saying. Well, like this one, I forget. I'm not even going to say the name of it. But they're saying, oh, this has been around since before Olaplex. They just didn't advertise properly. It's the same thing, but it's better. And it's more efficient because you don't need to bump the developer, all this stuff. Olaplex makes you do it because there's extra ingredients that come from formaldehyde. So the, what is he, owner, founder? Dean, Dean yes, yeah. Of Olaplex commented on this girl's picture himself and said, thanks for the information. If anyone can get an audio recording, not by telephone, of any rep of any knockoff company making similar or slanderous claims against Olaplex, I will make it well worth your while in free Olaplex products. <laughs> Olaplex is a patented chemistry that is non-existent in knockoff brands. Love, Dean. Right. So I just pushed it out there for you a little further, Dean. I think that's funny. And now I'm like, I want to egg people on just so I can get lots of Olaplex. Well, D Dean's a cool guy, too, because I, I called him. Um, when was that, Chris? Like a couple... Like a week ago, right? Yeah, it was last week. Yeah, so I called him last week, and he's on vacation in Hawaii, and he answers his phone, and he talked to me for quite a while, and he just, the thing I like about talking to him is he has so much information about the industry. Like, he knows, he knows his product really well, and he knows all the stuff about it and around it. So, um, it's every, probably another reason why it's successful. Like exactly. That's what yeah. ends up happening with companies if they have a an owner that's present and knows. Well, yeah. yeah. And that's why uh, when I called him, I was talking to him because um, I said, you know, we have this silk protein treatment that we're putting in hair color. Not saying it's Olaplex because it's not. It's a it's a silk protein treatment. Right. That's all it is. It makes hair smooth. That's the point. It doesn't uh, help bonds from breaking and all that. It actually will put silk protein in the hair. That's what it does. So I wanted to talk to him because I wanted to say, uh, have that conversation of I don't want – this is not Olaplex. Olaplex is his own thing. Um, and I said, I'm using it with Olaplex. So we're putting uh, Super Silk in color and Olaplex at the same time because they're doing two different two jobs. Two separate things. Yeah. So, um, so I had a long conversation with him about it, and he was very open to it, and he's just so smart on his product. And, um, you know, they put a lot of thought into it, and that's what makes it such a great product, you know. Test after test, and they, you know, they, they know – he knows that his product works and he knows why the other ones don't. Right. So it's just, you know, I always love talking to people like that because you'd get smarter as you're having that conversation. Right. But. I like it. And, you know, I enjoy, I appreciate how much knowledge his team also has. Like I was telling you earlier, yeah. the stuff that I'm learning just from looking at their Facebook page because he's got their team all on it. So when people have questions, they know. their educators are just pouring the information out there. Yeah. And it's, it's, I like that it's so accessible and it's so open book. Yeah. With whatever you want to know. So, yeah. go Olaplex. All right. Uh, all right, going off of, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before when we told the story about, what's his name, that does the haircuts for the homeless people. Oh, Marcus. Oh, that was last Marcus. Week. Mark. Was Not it last? Marcus. Mark. Mark. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. Uh, somebody just Marcus. put something up on one of the, the forums that I follow that, it, I'm not going to say her name. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, but she had just put up, she's like, make sure when you want to do stuff like that, as I'm sure many more people are going to want to be inspired, uh, that you do take sanitization into consideration. I did not give this picture to put up because it is kind of disgusting. Uh, she was doing, yes, she was doing haircuts on, they were doing haircuts for homeless people. And she didn't really follow protocol, I guess, with what she needed to. And she got a hair splinter underneath her thumbnail Ooh. and couldn't get it out. And it got infected. And she had to have surgery. And so, you know, that's good. Still do your charity work. But don't forget about all of the sanitization that you have to pass for your state board. Yeah. Because yeah. 
Well, that's another. But if you get somebody's hair even from the salon in your finger, you don't know that same. Thing oh no, you happens. can. Oh okay. Yeah. I'm just, not because they're yeah. homeless. No, no, no. It's oh. not because they're homeless. Oh. I'm just saying this is that situation where like people are just running out there. Because I know, like I know that you don't. Not everybody always follows 100 percent to what you should do as far as like remembering to I don't know clean everything all the time. Yeah. As far as like actual sanitary. Unfortunately, goes. that is yeah. That's yeah. a that's yeah. a big problem in the industry. I just yeah. meant for that instance. I don't think that had like those two. Well, like I was saying, if you guys look at most of the barbers, if you look at their photos, like all the big guys who are traveling are always wearing gloves for a reason. Yeah, yeah. because in a barber those shop, you're getting hairs. you're getting hair splinters every day. It sucks. Yeah. So if you're going out there, guys, just go get some uh, like latex gloves and you'll be golden. Yeah. You know. Um, that's it. Or just like really tight nylon ones. And but like you said, they're wearing them in the shops like that. Yeah, happen. that's it. They're wearing yeah, them in the shop yes. for that reason. Now it's either t- it's even ten times more important, especially if you're going out there cutting some guy's hair, hasn't had a shower in a year. You know, make sure you keep yourself safe. Yeah, it's definitely you know, and th- and that's with with uh, Mark. If you see him on the videos, he is wearing gloves too. Yeah. So I mean, it's not like like Christine. I get what Christina's saying because it's you could that could happen with anyone. Right. Um, and so just you just need to take precaution. No matter what you're doing, um, because the a piece of hair underneath your fingernail is is not a good thing. No, I mean, right. It's not supposed to be there, so right. infection can happen. All right. True story. Uh, and I think that's it. That's what we got. Okay, so I want to grab the wheel, Thad, um, and maybe don't throw it up yet, but because I want to want to go through. Uh, we asked people on the free salon education community. Uh, to ask questions, and those of the, uh, you that ask questions can have an opportunity to spin the wheel. Um, so Mickey Bullock um, had a question. Um, there's a few other questions. So I want to go through the questions because I think it's important, but then we'll pick somebody to oh, spin Mickey the totally wheel. Oh, Mickey totally thought that you were picking him right there. He did, I know. <laughs> you know it. Mickey <laughs> Bullock may be spinning the wheel. but Okay, so uh, he asked, what do you think, what do you all think of the PBA? I don't know anything about him. I don't either. I have no idea anything yeah, about Justin that. asked me today who, I was like, who wait, is that? the police I mean, I know, <laughs> like, I know, card? <laughs> I know <laughs> what it is. I just literally know nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Than... And Thad? Um, before this past weekend, I didn't know anything about it, uh, but because I was uh, watching the video cameras and listening to you uh, talk to Rowena, like, I learned a lot more. Yeah. And from what I heard, like, I like it. Yeah, so, so. the PBA is a, is a, a big association that was started a long, long time ago. And they are basically the whole the whole purpose of it when they started was to kind of fight for the rights of of hairstylists with licensing and all of that. So all the Supreme Court rulings and all that they're right there oh. on the front line. Yeah, okay. I did uh, an event for them once. Okay, <laughs> on Capitol Hill. Oh, so. by the way, I helped them. Nice. There you go. I now, worked with them. Uh, I I forgot about that. <laughs> did I not put that in my resume? <laughs> Whoops. Oops. So here's the here's I think what the challenge is. Um. You know, I think everybody's trying to find their way right now. Like I just did, I did a webinar for the PBA about six months ago. Um, they had a good turnout. I think, um, I think not enough people know about this stuff. Um, and I would say it's it's you know their fault in a way because we got to get them out. But they run ISSE show is the PBA. Um, they mm-hmm. do a lot of a lot of huge things. Naha is yeah is the PBA. So we have to. Uh, I think a lot of hairdressers don't know what the PBA is. and I have had licensing in three states now. I, I've been in contact with other states, and I have no idea who the hell these well, people the, the are state, until the, today. The, right. the, the, the state so. might not want you to know about the PBA. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, has nothing I, to do. I feel, though, in my travels of people I've, I've questioned in other states as other hairdressers or barbers or educators, I thought I would have at least heard it by now. Seven years later, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, except for they—they they may have been able to help you with your licenses. Uh, at this point, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, so check out the PBA. Um, I, I, I personally think that it's a great thing. Um, and you have to, you become a member just to support it. Um, they have free webinars when you're a member and all kinds of different education. So I think it's a cool thing. Um, to to join if you would like. Um, all right, so. Cat has a question. I'm considering making a new service menu. It seems the trend is less is more. What do you leave out from the menu? Also have, uh, I also have tiered pricing for different stylus levels. Should that be listed separately or is a up, which I dislike, be put in place? Like 40 and uh, up. Yeah, like 40 and up. Yeah. Of, yeah. 
Okay, so... Oh, and up, yeah. Well, the thing with up is most states, uh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but let's say somebody comes in for a haircut and you say 40 and up is your price and it takes you, for whatever reason, a couple hours to cut and finish their hair. You charge them an $85 bill, well, it took that much of your time, you're charging that much money for it right. because up there, they can't argue that price. It's considered, if they want to argue it, they could call the cops and be like, she's trying to rob you because, you know, it took her 80 Took her three and a half hours to do my hair, but an hour to do her hair. I don't think that they I mean forty and up in that sense. I think it's like like forty and up in like how I, under, we, I understand. I, I have heard it like that I though, where the that, end up is like covered your ass. Legally, this covers you in case it takes you X amount of time uh, to do something, and you're I trying to charge money for your service. It's like a kid yeah. coming and sitting down, and you do three haircuts on him because he didn't like the first two when it was exactly what he wanted, and pointed to it on a wall. You're charging him for three haircuts. Right. So the up is what's going to keep you safe. I got you. I understand what you're saying. If anybody wants hmm. to argue, I misunderstood what you were saying. Yeah, it, it saves you from the hassle of not being able to get a theft of service charge if it was a very large ticket and something had happened. Okay. Anybody else have? I forget what the question was. So it's really about the menu. <laughs> Should it be simple? Should there be more to it? Um, well, it depends on the, you know, I think the menu should be a reflection of the environment. Yeah. yeah. You know, if it's more of like a, you know, a nice, fancy, like over the top, spa kind of place then i could see a very lavish wordy you yeah. know make the the menu just dripping with descriptions that make you feel relaxed just by reading them or mm -hmm. you know if it's a little bit more modern and cool and hip looking then maybe you want a more streamlined menu that shows that yeah like it's something that if someone goes on your website or gets a to-go menu when they look at it they it, they can put the two things together right so go with your style yeah okay anybody else He's nailed yeah. ahead. Chris, do you have an opinion on this? No, I I think I agree. Yeah, but, I think yeah. it's uh, good to showcase like what you offer just because if she, somebody might not know that you offer balayage. Like, if right. you just have balayage underneath like what you would consider highlighting. Yeah, definitely have what services yeah. you offer. Yeah. And then if she does have, like, she could put end up, but I think you should list each tier of stylist price. The starting. Yeah, the starting yeah. price of them. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't just generalize it and put 40 and up right even if you just put like the level one price right just so that you know at the baseline this is the cheapest you're ever going to pay for this service in yeah. this salon because yeah. this is actually something that um this is my next adventure in my mind of things i need to do because i w we've had our menu for a while i liked the concept of it for a bit but now i want to i think things I think we should just get like ipads things or change yeah ipads yeah something simple um you know, to showcase what you have to offer. So th it's something that you can change a lot, too. Well, because also know? the issue with if you do, like if you were to go under and do, this is what a level one haircut is, level two haircut, level three, level four, like you might not always have somebody in the salon that is at that level. Right. I mean, that's where we're at right now. Like right. We don't have, every level is not covered. Right. But it's fine because if somebody calls in, we just say we have this level available right. and this level available. We don't give them all the options, you know. Right. If you want a haircut at 3 o'clock on a Wednesday, well, we only have mm -hmm. level two, you right. know. So, um, but that's, yeah, hopefully that helps out. Um, also, when you list the separately, if you have a tier pricing, I definitely strongly would recommend explaining it in that. So you get the wording down and have your team understand that that uh, dialogue. So I still read the thing on the computer. Yeah. So we have it written at the computer. We have it written on the menu. So that because it's a hard thing to to explain. Right. Um. You know, when you're trying to explain, well, oh, this haircut's forty, but this hair, because you don't want people to just say, well, you know, you don't want people to think that the higher haircut is just because they're better. Right. Like that's not the goal. It's to talk about all the different aspects of it. So just make sure that you write down your own dialogue and figure that out. Which are the aspects of why we raise our prices? Going back to the first. Exactly. Person. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Um, which is based on it's a there's a Robert Cromings thing, but with the reputation, experience, and demand. So basically, you know, the reputation is how busy are you. And the demand is that as well, and uh, the experience. I don't really believe in experience. Well, the experience comes with pricing. how busy you are. Right, exactly. So it all it all has to do with how busy you are. So really, it should just be because how I'm busy. busy. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm busy. It's sixty because I'm busy. Right. <laughs> all right. So Debbie says, how long does it take to build a new salon? Or build at a new salon. <laughs> I was going to say. Like, <laughs> I know. I was like, I don't know. Um, that's kind of open. So how long does it take to build at a new salon? I've been there six months on commission. I stay my whole shift. Whether or not I have clients, is it just a matter of patience? 
I had mm-hmm. always heard from beauty school to expect three years to get a book that you can live comfortably off of. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like a steady book. I mean, that's just the industry, like, obviously, because we're all from very different places and we've all heard it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it depends not just that, but it, it depends on where you're working. Are you working at a street shop where you're having people come in and there's no appointments available at all because it's only by who shows up at what time for yeah. what and you're waiting? Or you're working in an area where it's all by appointment only, where there's no real walk-ins, where it, it's it's the environment of someone calling to see your work or whatever the case may be. So I feel it's it, it can't be held. Like, I built a book here in eight months. I was going to say, how long have you been here? Eight, I think, wait, no, seven months. I've been doing hair in here now. It's, been, it's only been six, six or seven months, seven months since January. And I built a book that would probably take me about a year and a half anywhere else to build. Yeah. Only because the town's so small, word of mouth spreads really quick. And there's, n- I was the only real open person here because everybody else's book is almost packed. Yeah. Which again goes and that's with. that's why we also guys, don't bring on too yeah. many people at once. Yeah. Because yeah. we can't have three people not making money here. Everyone would be miserable. We've done it. Well, and, we tried And that's it. what yeah. happened. Everybody gets miserable. I mean, think about the very little amount of time that you guys get to be away from a, a chair to, you know, kind of have that downtime. It's already kind of like, all right, what do I do when I'm when I have downtime? Yeah. But like. Well, we also, too, I don't know where she lives, but we pay hourly if you're not hitting your commission. And so uh, as far legally as I know, in Pennsylvania, you have to do that. As far as I know, everywhere. I don't think I don't think technically. I'm not sure, but I've heard lately that I I think that that's not – you can't be like that anywhere now. No, I know New Jersey. They don't give a crap. You make 20 bucks, make 20 bucks, have a good week. So really? Suck. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've I've been in salons where, like – That might have just been the salon screwing you because yeah, I think it's like a federal – like, no, You can't. have to pay someone for yeah, it. Yeah. I, I think it's one of those things where it's like you have to pay them a minimum. Like they even they, have that with servers. Because if that's just to say, though, it's like a server thing where the hourly isn't anything to waste your time at. Because so no, pay because you a couple bucks an hour. the reason is if you don't make – enough tips to hit what minimum wage is yeah. then right. they have to make up for that on your paycheck yeah. no yeah they don't care what were you gonna say chris oh no i was just gonna say that that's yeah yeah like, so you'd have to keep track of all your tips and everything yeah. and you'd have to know but i mean but for her being there what did she say six months six months yeah, yeah. yeah. i would i mean you have to give it more time yeah, yeah. Wait, patience is definitely yeah. there um and i if she's not growing yeah. Then maybe she wants to then definitely look into because she doesn't want to waste her time either. Right, but I mean, in six months, how many times have you seen someone if you saw someone on your first day? Right. You know what are they? How many returns? Have that you had? maybe three yeah, times. Yeah, like she should look at those. Yeah, you should be studying those numbers. Yeah. 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 So make sure we look in your salon software and look at your retention over the last six months. Look at uh, how many new clients you have every month. Is that going up? Right. And everything should be growing. If it's growing, then you're good. Right. If it's not growing, then you need to probably go somewhere else um, because it should be. Or talk to, you know, your salon owner and figure out maybe different things that you could do. But it's just you have to be able to look at your book as future, not this is all that I made today. Like today, I was so excited because I realized as I looked at my book when I got here, my first two clients were two brand new color clients. Yeah. And so to me, that means – awesome that's two more good ticket items that are going to happen i can add them to the pool of people yeah and they were both really happy so now i've got two new return color clients and this is another thing that i try to get across to any stylist i'm talking to that's up, upset about commission um commission's a weird thing because it seems like the only way you make money is if you're doing hair but technically um the way that the business works is you get paid whether you're doing hair or not but if you're not doing hair, you get minimum wage. So no matter what, if you break down what your hourly would be at when you get your paycheck, that's what you're getting paid hourly. Not based on Tuesday, I didn't have any clients, but I was there all day, so I didn't make any money. But now Wednesday, I'm fully booked, so I'm really happy. And then Thursday, I was slow, so now I'm miserable because I didn't make as much money. It really has to do with the total that you bring in over a week's time or a two-week period and and divide that by how many hours you work. That's your hourly wage. And that will be over minimum wage. So um, just make sure before you get upset about just sitting around, um, do stuff about it. Be in the salon. That's the whole point because you're not going to grow if you're not here. you know. And that's that's really what it's all about. And you're always making more than minimum wage uh, or at least minimum wage. So don't, uh, don't be upset about that. 
you should be making money. If you are in New Jersey working wherever Justin worked, then – And give you a list of where <laughs> right. not to go. Then, yeah, so <laughs> then uh, then maybe try to find somewhere else. But um, I would definitely – you should be getting paid minimum wage, I believe. Hopefully more. Here, well, here. That would be that's one reason my list of salons is like a mile long. <laughs> Well, I bet. I mean, when you, it is a tough thing to do to grow uh, in this industry because you start from nothing and yeah. you, you got to build trust with uh, the clients, the town, and you're really, you're trying to grow. So, um, you know, it takes time. And then you think about after six months, you've got maybe a good 40 people talking about you. Mm-hmm. And then after a year, you have a hundred people talking about you. And when a hundred people are talking about you, it's way more powerful than 10 people that you started with. You know, right. so once that hundred starts talking about you, now you've got 200 and it just grows. And that's why in three years, now you've got a ton of people talking about you and it just, the people start coming in, but it takes a long time to climb up that hill to then where it just finally starts to Especially to if you do it by out. yourself. Like I'm lucky I have you guys to work with. And even in here, we all still talk about each other. Yeah. You know, right. it's not just like you're pushing me because I have a low book. You're pushing everyone and vice versa. Like everybody's pushing everyone else in here. Right. And talking about how fantastic everyone is at what they do. So that helps, you know, astronomically compared to somebody just doing it by themselves in a salon where nobody really cares. Right. All right. So don't work crappy people. Let's see. So are we going to pick, we have (laughs) Mickey, Kat, or Deb? Are we picking by their questions? How Not by their question. We just got to pick someone. I didn't think about that. Has oh, uh, any of them? So I was going to say, let's go with Mickey based off of... Uh, <laughs> oh, we got to pick someone. The the Throw a yeah. dart at your computer screen and yeah, say... Yeah, whatever hits. All right. All right. I'm going to... I have a person... Okay, so pick a number. This is complicated. <laughs> Between number. one and three. Between one and three. Two. Two? Two. Two. All right, it's Cat. All right. Were they numbered one, two, three? <laughs> Backwards. <laughs> so two was the so same no matter two. what. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it worked. The way that brilliant mind works. I know, it's amazing. Um <laughs> Christina's face. I know. <laughs> All right. Hey Thad, good job, bud. Thanks, Thad. All right, so on the wheel we have some new stuff. We have a carving comb from Donald Scott. Ooh, we date have with Thad. a <laughs> with that we have the uh super silk kit um uh, from super silk we have amika um what else do we have Bal- uh sunlight's balayage we have millennium ooh, ooh. three months free of miva we have some cool stuff on here minerva beauty dot com uh some fse stuff that we can send you and i think that's all yes. why is why do you say have the kill? person do it that's the yeah, hardest one for spin she just always has. Keeping stuff. it. Keeping it real. Pure, All right. Pure. So, Kat, let's see. Super Silk? All right. Super, Super silk. silk. All right. Cool. Where so, she, wait, where's she there? Super Silk. I, I can't figure that out. So, Kat, Hopefully, she's in America. Cat Hall, you left the question. So, the, the deal is you have to watch the show to win this. So, Kat, send me your. Uh, you want to email, email again? I know. <laughs> Send me your address and uh, also a your name and address. That's all I really need. And we will send you out your Super Silk kit. So Is there a time congratulations. Limit? No, she can watch this three years from now. Ever. We'll still send it. Yeah. Who is Cat? Oh, Cat! The first one. We all right, that and time. now we yeah. also need to pick somebody from our Instagram uh, contest. Did so you figure out how you're picking them. Yes, I know how I'm picking them. Pick a number between one and six hundred and forty-three. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to count from the bottom and tell you who just got to find the f- – there it is. All right. Man, am I bringing the wheel back? There's 101 people that played for this. <laughs> no, no wheel. Oh. No, they win. Uh, I posted a picture of uh, a set of uh, YS Park combs and a bunch uh, of uh, um, flair. I really, I, I, win. I really like YS Park combs. Can I start getting in on this contest? Well, yeah, you can say, say, did you pick me? You can get in by uh, pushing the button here. There you go. Who do we pick? I don't get to spin anything. All right, so the winner of <laughs> no, you don't. You're too far away. Yeah. Uh, I'm the one closest to the wheel. So. All right, so the winner of the combs I pick? and pins is Echelon Salon. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Even that has a part. Echelon. Echelon, probably. Yeah, Echelon Salon. Uh, so that is at. Echelon. At, 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 at Echelon. <laughs> that's the Iowa. <laughs> 
at Echelon Salon. You're from Illinois. Um, <laughs> Illinois, yeah. I don't even know where I'm from. Uh, Arkansas. <laughs> so, Echelon Salon. Is that Portuguese accent? Email me, contest at freesaloneducation.com. That is. And uh, send me your address to the salon, and we'll send you out these goodies. You can give them out to whoever you would like. All right. That is that. We have an interview with who? Cassandra Ooh. McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Ooh, yeah. I love her. Uh, she owns a salon in Florida. She's a palm oil educator, but she built a huge Instagram following based on her images and stuff that she's uh, done. If you look her so, up, you'll be surprised because you've probably liked her pictures in the past. Yeah. Because they've, they've been doing some bangs. So that's stuff. what we talked about in the interview was how she gets those pictures the way that she does. So if you guys are into Instagram, um, that was the big thing. Her pictures are very, like, really well done. The uh, hair so is she really talks. Well done too. Yeah. So right. Well, that's <laughs> that's what makes it all work. So definitely uh, check out this interview. I think that's pretty much it, right? Wow. Well, that was that was a that was a quick one. Yeah. In and out. Good job, man. Yeah. So in you can follow follow Crazy. Brian Hair. Uh, just follow me everywhere I go. Follow me. Yeah. Now on uh, it's Give hairstyle. Hairstyle. Dreya. Dre Day two two eight nine. I am Justin Scott. That I am the real Justin Scott. Just that Pat, I'm gonna stuff. run you over. <laughs> and Christina, I'm the second Justin Scott. <laughs> <laughs> We're all Justin Scotts. Follow us We're everything Scott, at Free Salon Education. Thank you to Millennium Systems International for letting us use their booth to do this interview that you're about to watch. Also, MinervaBeauty.com. We love their furniture. We sit on it every week, so every we, we would not be this comfortable uh, every day. Yeah, we use it. Um, and thank you to DemandForce.com/FreeSalonEducation. Uh, for keeping our clients informed of all of her appointments. Yes, thank you. And giving us fantastic <laughs> reviews. Yep. And, and check out Super Silk on freesaloneducation.com store if you guys want to get that. Also, um, all the how-to videos are on freesaloneducation.com now too, so you guys can figure out how to use Super Silk and check it out. Uh, but we got the kit on there. So awesome. that is it. Enjoy this interview, and we will see you guys next week right here on Splitting Hairs. Hey guys, this is Matt Beck from freesaloneducation.com. Tampa. So I can't wait to hear about your salon. You've got so much stuff going on. You also work for Paul Mitchell. Yes. So uh, let's talk about all the different things. So look, first off, how long have you owned your salon? Well, we're actually just celebrated our first year anniversary in March. So okay. we're still kind of a new baby, but I owned a salon previously in Missouri as well. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So you did you grow up in Missouri? Uh, partially. I grew up there until I was nine, moved to Florida. So okay. both are home. Okay. So yeah. how did you have a salon in Missouri? Well, I did move back there for part of my adult life for okay. about five years, <laughs> okay. opened a salon, and then moved back to Florida again. So kind of ping pong back and forth. Okay. So what would you say is the biggest difference between owning a salon in Missouri and owning a salon in Florida? You know, I think it's a very different um, process to okay. grow a clientele in a small town versus a bigger city. Um, I think in a small town, you have such a tight network of people that that word of mouth spreads like wildfire, Quick. good or bad. Okay. Um, in a bigger city, you almost have to like earn it a little bit more. You yeah. have to really stand out. And that's why I know we're going to talk a little bit about social media. And that's where that really came into play. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I would have thought maybe the opposite, that if you're in a big city, it would be easier to build up. Um, did you Do you think owning a salon before was... It was easier the second time going into it? Absolutely. Okay. 150%. There was like this big learning curve that I just skipped with the second yeah. Uh, yeah. time around. So it was awesome. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, um, and you, how long have you been with Paul Mitchell? Uh, since the beginning. Um, actually, July will be the 10 year anniversary of when I started Paul Mitchell, the school Tampa. Okay. Um, I was student number four. So that was right after the school opened, there was a core class of eight of us. So okay. from the beginning of my career, I've been with Paul Mitchell, but I've been an educator for five years. Okay, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And you, um, you're you working with the new product. Yes. Do you want to talk about that? Um, the, the Color XG um, has been a total game changer. Which I do not, I don't have that in my salon yet. So you, you, can, tell, you can tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah. It's really awesome. It's, it's, you know, it's just a great addition to the color bar that we already have. I love Paul Mitchell, the color. PM Shines, and then we had the addition of Shines XG last year. So this is just another level of permanent color. And one of my favorite things to play with right now are the intensifiers. They just okay. really give a lot of versatility. And I think, you know, when you have that kind of artistic spirit, you want to micromanage your color and have control over it. Yeah. And this really gives you the ability to just pinpoint that exact color that you want. 
or really to go to the next level with pastels or vibrant colors, but still in a permanent format. Okay. So it's a it's a whole other ball game. It's really fun. It's been awesome. really fun. Yeah. Awesome. So you have so you have the salon. You started the Instagram, and this is one of the things. So I put out on social media who should be interviewed at the show. Yeah. And your name came up quite a few times, which was really cool. So. Um, why do you think that happened? What, do you, what, what did you do within social media to grow the following that you have? You know, it's, it's hard for me to exactly say because I feel like a lot of this happened organically in a way. It just was something that I decided to put out pretty consistently and just it was a decision to just post my work. It was an outlet that I had in the area that I was in versus going and finding, going out and handing out business cards. Right. So I just started doing it and I started doing it every day. And then it evolved into a little bit more and a little bit more. It got attention um, from things like Modern Salon and Behind the Chair, and then it grew. But I think the biggest point that I, I kind of decided at the beginning is that I was just going to be really true to myself okay. and who I was and have just be honest, you know, not hide formulas and not it was just being open and sharing. And I think that that really garnered a whole other audience. Um, well, and you have some phenomenal images. That thank you. Now, I'm going to put up a couple as okay. we're talking, so it'll be somewhere in here. Okay. Right? But we, uh, so I've looked at your pictures. I have no idea how the hell you take these pictures <laughs> because it looks like you're taking them with expensive cameras. And it's I, my iPhone. Exactly. So take me through this process okay. because I think a lot of hairdressers have a challenge with getting a good picture of the hair that they've done. Well, I think the biggest things, and I, and I have a lot of questions, you know, what, what camera do you use? What lighting do you use? And I think the number one suggestion I can give is one, taking the time. Yeah. Setting yourself up with a good style and a great style and finish is probably the most important thing because if the hair is not finished impeccably, yeah. it will not photograph well. It's like three hairs turn into 50 on a, on a phone or a camera, you know? Right. So um, really, really taking the time with style and finish. And I think we just, from the beginning of the, the salon opening, built that into our service. We don't do you know, qu quick finishes unless the guest absolutely has to is on a time crunch. Yeah. We really spend the time to do that. So that's number one. Number two is just finding a really good source of light. We have good light in the salon, but truthfully, the best light that we have is the sunlight from the front window. Yeah. And that really just shows the true color more than anything. So um, we found really an indirect source of sunlight. So not directly on the hair, um, but a front facing window is the best. We always get bummed out when we have a big color correction at the end of the night and it's dark. <laughs> right, yeah. We're like, yeah, well, no one, no, no one gets a good picture at night. No, it's hard. It's definitely hard. Yeah. Um, we've tried everything too. So really sunlight is, I say it's the best filter yeah. for hair color, yeah. you know, and, and just a really good style and finish. And then taking a lot of pictures. You can't take three and expect the money shot. Like I take probably on average. 20 to 30 pictures per guest. Per, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And and what I love most about your pictures and uh, Brian Hare, I don't know if you yes. know, but yeah. he yeah. he works with uh, with us. He told me about you as well. And he was saying like you're I had to look at your pictures. So I took a look at your pictures and they're just flawless. I mean, they yeah. it's almost like uh, like they're they're not real. Like the hair is like <laughs> it's really good. So Thank I, you. I, I'm impressed. I think you did a great job. There's there's a reason why you have the following that you have. Thank you. And uh, so what's next? How's this? So the salon's been a year. Yeah. So what's what's next with you? What's your plan? Well, um, we just hit some really um, one of our target goals for two of our stylists. They hit some of their big goals, and we have our, our team that's growing, and we have three young stylists kind of in the works. So really, our next step is just to grow our team. Okay. Um, we are kind of doing a little different thing with our schedule. We do four 10-hour days. Okay. And we have a, sm a smaller space. So my goal for next year is to really start opening the salon um, five, six, 10-hour days, and then getting a rotation. Yeah. And just a bigger team. but. Um, still keeping that really close knit family that we have because we work really closely together. We have a yeah. 1,300 square foot salon, so okay. you know we're pretty close. But um, we have a lot of fun together. We really enjoy what we do, and I think if you look at my stylist across the board, their social media, the work is impeccable. And I yeah. think happy hairdressers do good hair, right. and a good team makes for um, the ability to do the type of color corrections that we do, or the spending the extra time on the style and finish because everybody readily jumps in and helps each other. Yeah. So when I have an eight hour color service that goes into my next two services, I'm not freaking out because I know I have hands that'll help me. That's awesome. And that does a lot. So that's, I just want to continue to grow that. And what do you think is the, uh, 
the the thing that makes your staff want to do that want to do that extra work or you know jump in and help you out because that's a question that we get really yeah. often how do you inspire a team how do you get a team to to all work together and not just you know I'm done with my work so I'm gonna go in the back and hang There's out a few different things I think that come into play and I think the very first one is hiring the right person yeah and and that sounds like you know duh but I really think um, having a super duper specific clear idea of who you want in your salon yeah and if someone doesn't have it you can't be afraid to say no right and my mom and dad they they do a lot of motivational speaking and things like that and my dad always says you have to be willing to let go of the good to get the great yep. and so my philosophy is just hiring the great ones awesome so that's right. that's number one yeah. well very cool so yeah. if if you guys are not following cassandra you can follow her Cassandra Platinum on Instagram. Okay. And then Cassandra Lane McLaughlin on Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. I know you have to get back to work doing yes. great hair. Yes. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Millennium Systems International for letting us hang out at their booth at Premier Orlando. And anything else? No, just thank you. All thank right. You for having me. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks. Watch Splitting Hairs, the hairdresser's podcast, live every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, or as close as we can get it.